humor me just for a moment. Close your eyes and imagine God. What do you see when you close your eyes and see God? Well, for me, it reminds me of this moment when I was five years old. I was at Target, the one up at North Academy, and I was with my mom and her best friend, and we were shopping. Now, I don't remember um, deciding to steal that gum, but I must have decided that I was going to get it, whether my mom was going to buy it for me or not. I don't remember looking at the selection, which must have seemed like so many different varieties as a five-year-old. I don't remember taking the gum, nor do I remember putting it in that pocket of that beautiful red coat that I loved so much. But I do know that is exactly where I put that gum. After we were done checking out, we went to the little food area on the side, the one right next to the exit, kind of by the bathrooms. And, and we went over there, and my mom went up to order food. And, and I went to go sit down, and, and her best friend came to sit down beside me. And as I sat down, that gum fell out of that pocket. I was so busted. Now, my mom's friend did not yet know that I was busted, so she just told me, hey, you dropped your gum. I'm like, oh, no, it's not mine. Even though she sat there and watched it fall out of my pocket, I was going to deny it, at which time she then also knew that I was totally busted. <laughs> and then when my mom came back, then I was really, really busted. My image of God when I close my eyes for some reason is this 1980s cartoon version of Zeus, a big powerful ancient guy in the sky, thunderbolt in hand, just sitting there watching, waiting for those moments, just waiting for me to get busted. But today's text, that's not the image of God that it draws. So listen now to these words from Proverbs chapter 8. The Lord created me at the beginning of his works, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bit of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made Firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him, like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and doing of this word. So I know you've all kept up with your ancient Hebrew, so I don't need to explain this to you. Just kidding, I haven't either. Um, in this, this moment, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. The Hebrew word for I was brought forth is danced or twirled, twisted. Before there were, when there were no depths, I was danced into existence. Before there was anything, I was twirled into being. What a beautiful image. Before there was anything, before there was mountains or seas, when there was nothing, God danced 
creation into being. God twirled the first creation. I, we do, when I do funerals, I spend some time with the family before the funeral. And for the beginning of our time together, I, I sit and we kind of do the business part of a funeral. So what's the order of service? What scriptures are we going to use? What songs will we use? What's the bulletin? And, and we do those things. And, and afterwards, I push aside the business. I quite literally move the Bible and the hymnal to the side and look at the family. And then we start sharing stories about the person that has passed. It is a time full of grief and laughter and stories. And, and there was one moment, in, and I was meeting with a family, and we were laughing and sharing stories, and there was grief and there was tears. And, and I asked, how was she as a grandmother? And the room went silent. And finally, finally someone spoke up in just a whisper. She was amazing. She would spend time with her grandkids and they would laugh together. They would bake together and, and cook together. And, and she would go grab a chair and pull it up right next to the counter so her grandbaby could be right there creating with her. And they would, as they mixed and stirred and made things, they would laugh and they would talk and they would share stories. What if God isn't a cartoon rendition of Zeus, but more like a loving grandparent? What if the, the God danced into creation and together they sat and, and they created, they made soil and rocks and, and put mountains together and, and made the seas and planted seeds that plants might grow, that flowers might spring up in creation. How beautiful is that? So what I read to you was the middle of Proverbs 8. And what, it, it, what you kind of miss in that reading is that the voice in this is the voice of wisdom. Wisdom was danced into creation, whirled and twirled into being. Maybe you have heard it called Sophia. Sophia is the Greek term for wisdom. Or Lady Wisdom, she is often called. These are the first four verses of Proverbs 8. Does not wisdom call? And does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, to you, O oh people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. Wisdom. Wisdom is calling to you from the city gates, from the corner of the street. Wisdom is calling to you throughout your day. Wisdom is calling. Wisdom is inviting you to come, come and see the beautiful, the beautiful way God creates. God's beautiful creation is woven throughout creation. And wisdom is calling to us, inviting us to see it all the time. Now, I, I have seen God's beautiful creation this week. I, I saw it in a video that I watched. It, it was a video in the midst of COVID, a dancer 
a young dancer. She was probably only nine or 10. And the class, of course, got shut down, so she couldn't go dance with her classmates in the studio. So she decided to make a video outside in the rain. And it, she did her video to, to um, Natasha Bedingfield's song, Unwritten. Start staring at the blank page before you. Open up the dirty window. Let the sun illuminate the words that you could not find reaching, reaching for something in the distance. So close you can almost taste it. Release your inhibitions. Feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel it for you. Only you can let it in. No one else, no one else can speak the words on your lips. Drench yourself in words unspoken. Live your life with arms wide open. Today is where your book begins. I saw God's beauty this week in a documentary that I watched. Uh, Pink was on tour and she was taking us with her from one tour venue to the next tour venue and she had her whole family in tow and there's this moment in that video that she's talking about her daughter Willow and she's talking about her connection with Willow, how Willow is such a beautiful person that she is humble and funny and unafraid in this world. And Pink says this about Willow, it is so incredibly healing to watch her walk through the world wild and free with no armor, no heartbreak. No one's taught her who and how to be or broken her spirit or broken her heart. God's beauty is woven through the fabric of creation. Have you seen it this week? Maybe you can watch for it in the week to come. Amen. I'm Will you pass this out so I can do? Thank you. God world and danced creation into being. And he sent us wisdom that we might see it, that we might hear it crying in the streets, calling out to us in all we do. But we so often miss it. So he sent us a reminder, a reminder with love and grace. And Jesus, at that Last Supper, he took the bread, he broke the bread, he blessed it. And he said, take, eat, do this often in remembrance of me. And when the meal was over, he took the cup. He lifted the cup and he said, thanks. And he said, drink from this often in remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, pour your life, your love, your wisdom on these gifts of bread and wine, that we all might know your love through them. Let us take a moment to receive together. Eternal God, we have come and been reminded of your joy, reminded of your grace, your rejoicing and your celebration. Send us out now, nourished and ready to feed the world, to love your world, your creation. Amen. <laughs>